जय हिंद लेडीज एंड जेंटमैन वेरी वार्म ग्रीटिंग्स टू ईच वन ऑफ यू फ्रॉम एविएशन सेफ्टी मैनेजमेंट सोसाइटी ऑफ इंडिया एविएशन सेफ्टी इंडिया टेक्स ग्रेट प्लेजर इन शेयरिंग ए वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग एंड एजुकेटिव वीडियो ऑन इंसिडेंट एनालिसिस एंड लेसन लर्न it was almost a double disaster in making when two aircraft of same airline declared made a few at delhi airport when the airport was experiencing very bad weather we have highest respect for operators pilots and air traffic controllers in order to avoid the identity of airlines and the pilots we have used airbus 1 and airbus 2 in this video in place of the call sign of the individual aircraft it was indeed a hair raising incident which had the potential of becoming a very major serious accident our objective in avian safety india is to create awareness among the stakeholders so as to avoid serious incidents of this nature in future there is lot of learning value from the analysis of this incident let's move on to the video presentation airbus 1 and 2 were involved in a serious incident of fuel emergency during the approach to land at delhi on 2nd july 2021 the aircraft were planned to operate a dual passenger flight to dehradun first let's have a look at the matar at dehradun dehradun weather was generally few to scattered cumulonimbus clouds and winds gusting to about 25 knots delhi matar had reported no sig till about 10:30 hours utc matar and thereafter it has reported couple of cbs and gusting winds up to 25 knots now we'll discuss sequence of events on 2nd july 21 Airbus 1 was operating a scheduled passenger flight to Dehradun. During the approach to land at Dehradun at around 1000 feet, the aircraft did a go around due to crosswind up to 45 to 50 knots. After go around, the aircraft climbed to 7000 feet and entered into a prescribed hold pattern at approximately 1025 utc with a total of 3193 kg of fuel on board later weather of delhi was requested by airbus 1 from dehradun tower around 1029 utc Delhi gave a weather report to Dehradun and the same was communicated to Airbus 1 by Dehradun ATC at 10:31 UTC Weather reported at Delhi was visibility 3.5 km temperature 37 degree QNS 998 trend no sig During the investigation it was found that 
the met information which was communicated by delhi atc to their adun atc was of 0500 utc and not the current weather at 10:30 utc flight crew of airbus 1 discussed the weather and when they learned about the decision of another aircraft of the same company airbus 2 to divert to delhi due to bad weather at dehradun airbus 1 too decided to divert to delhi at the time when airbus 1 turned turned toward delhi around 11 and a half fuel on board was approximately 295 kg which was about minimum diversion fuel for delhi that is 1868 kg after setting the course for delhi when airbus 1 contacted delhi the radar controller advised airbus 1 to hold at the present position due to bad weather at delhi flight crew of airbus 1 informed atc delhi that they had around 14 minutes of extra fuel remaining delhi radar thereafter cleared airbus 1 to set a course for delhi Airbus 2, which also had diverted from Dehradun to Delhi, attempted approach on runway 28, but carried out missed approach around 11:29 hours UTC due to bad weather. By the time Airbus 1 reached approach path runway 28, the weather around Delhi further deteriorated with rain and winds. gusting up to 50 knots there was no landing at delhi airport from 11:21 hours utc to 1200 hours utc due to bad weather during this period a total of 6 arrivals were diverted to lucknow and jaipur Airbus 1 made an approach at Delhi airport but could not land due to weather and carried out missed approach the fuel state at this time was 1433 kg Airbus 1 asked ATC if Hinnan is available for landing and ATC responded in negative Airbus 2 declared made a fuel at 11:33 hours UTC and Airbus 1 declared made a fuel at 11:38 hours UTC at around 11:44 hours UTC Airbus 2 requested to wait for another 10 minutes for improvement of weather and preferred to stay close to localizer runway 10 or 11 which was agreed by delhi atc airbus 1 also requested delhi atc to keep them closer to the approach path of runway 10 which was denied by atc airbus 2 was vectored for an approach to runway 11 and airbus 1 was cleared for approach behind airbus 2 airbus 2 landed safely on runway 11 at 1201 hours however airbus 1 which was number 2 to land was asked to discontinue the approach due to cft on the runway at this stage airbus 1 had fuel remaining 599 kg and was advised by atc that there would be another 7 to 8 minutes delay for landing 
Airbus flight crew expressed their urgency to land as they were low on fuel. Finally, Airbus One was vectored for approach on runway 11 and landed safely around 1210 hours UTC. Upon landing, remaining fuel on board the aircraft was approximately 300 kg. Now let's have a look at the weather related information. Latest weather of Delhi was requested by flight crew of Airbus One from Dehradun Tower around 10.29 UTC. Delhi gave weather report at 10.31 UTC to Dehradun hotline. Visibility 3.5 km, QNH 998, runway in use 28 oblique 29, trend no sig, and temperature 37. As per the Delhi Met report, between 1000 UTC to 1100 UTC, the weather was reported visibility 2.2 km, blowing dust, cumulonimbus clouds, and gusty winds from 15 to 25 knots. Delhi ATC gave weather information to Dehradun of hotline around 10.31 UTC and same was passed on to flight crew by Dehradun, which was completely incorrect from actual weather scenario at Delhi. <clears throat> According to the Delhi ATS unit, the MET information on the electronic display window was probably not the updated one, and the controller had passed the available old displayed information to their Adun, which was matching the METAR of Delhi at 0500 UTC. It is important to mention here that the MET information on the electronic display window always has the date and time of METAR, which should have been verified by the controller on duty. Also, the displayed weather information is auto refreshed in 120 seconds. However, when the whenever the displayed meteorological information is stale, the color of the refresh icon changes to red. In such situation, when the displayed meteorological information is found to be old, oblique not updated. The same should be refreshed using the mouse and refresh button option, which has also not been ensured by the controller on duty before communicating the MET information at 10.31 hour UTC to Dehradun. IMD and CNS automation team were asked by Delhi ATS unit to provide the recording of the displayed weather information on 2nd July at 10.30 UTC. However, the same could not be made available as there is no provision for the recording of MET display streaming in Indra air traffic management system. Now we'll carry out the analysis of the incident. Now to begin with, the wind reported at Dehradun as per the METAR of 1000 hours and 1030 hours were 0 to 0 oblique 360 degrees around 15 knots gusting to 25 knots. However, the pilots abandoned the approach due to experiencing crosswinds of the order of 45 to 50 knots at around 1,000 feet while on final approach. From the above, it appears that the crosswinds reported by Met at Dehradun, albeit at surface level, 
were at large variance with the actual crosswinds at 1,000 feet and may not have been accurate. The weather report obtained by Dehradun ATC for Delhi at 10.30 hours and then communicated to the pilot of Airbus 1 was not the actual weather since the ATCO at Delhi had reported the weather displayed on the electronic display board without checking the date and time of the weather. As a result, the weather of 0500 UTC instead of 1030 UTC was communicated by Delhi ATC to Dehradun ATC and further by Dehradun ATC to Airbus 1. It appears gross negligence on the part of the controller and also showed a lack of knowledge about the SOPs and functional aspects of the electronic weather display board. The crew of Airbus 1 discussed the weather at Delhi, which was communicated to them by Zeradun ATC, and the decision of Airbus 2 which was also trying to land at Dehradun to divert to Delhi due to bad weather at Dehradun, seemed to have influenced the decision of Airbus 1 to divert to Delhi. The situational awareness of the crew of Airbus 1 seemed to be lacking. The pilots should have known that they are flying in monsoon weather and they should have kept a close watch on the fuel state, MDF for diversion and the weather at Delhi and Jaipur, which were the planned diversions. The crew, the crew of Airbus 1 did not make any attempt for another approach at Dehradun and maintained hold for 40 crucial minutes before deciding to divert to Delhi. Dehradun weather reported was not very bad and the strong crosswind that the pilots had experienced on their first approach might have reduced in intensity. The pilots should have tried a second approach at Dehradun after 10 to 15 minutes wait and if unable to land then should have divert to Delhi without wasting any time and fuel. If the pilots of Airbus 1 had kept a close watch on the weather at Delhi and Jaipur and on their MDF for Jaipur, their op option to divert to Jaipur if bad weather at Delhi would not have closed. During the 40 minutes period, the pilots of Airbus 1 were experiencing bad weather in and around the hole and were busy in avoiding bad weather and maintaining the hold rather than thinking ahead and keeping track of fuel and weather at diversionary airports. Having diverted to Delhi, Airbus 1 contacted Delhi and was told by Delhi to hold the present position due to bad weather at Delhi. At this point, Airbus 1 informed Delhi that they had only 14 minutes of surplus fuel available for landing at Delhi. ATC generally paid little attention to transmissions like surplus fuel of only 14 minutes available. Standard call under such conditions is to communicate that the aircraft has minimum fuel since the ATCOs have been trained to respond to minimum fuel transmission. Airbus 1 went around from approach to Dehradun Airport 
at around 10 20 hours and was in hold till 1100 hours when the decision to drive to delhi was taken during the 40 minutes period neither the pilot decided to make an approach to dehradun airport nor did they make the decision to divert when delhi informed the pilots about bad weather at delhi the pilot seemed to have made no effort to get detailed weather information at delhi through atis in addition the pilot did not discuss contingency plans if they could not land at delhi due to bad weather as per the company sop pic shall advise atc of a minimum fuel state by declaring minimum fuel when having committed to land at a specific aerodrome the pilots calculate that any change to the existing clearance to that aerodrome may result in landing with less than the planned final reserve fuel the declaration of minimum fuel informed atc that all planned aerodrome options have been reduced to a specific aerodrome of intended landing and any change to the existing clearance may result in landing with less than planned final fuel reserve this is not an emergency situation but an indication that an emergency situation is possible should any additional delay occur pic shall declare a situation of fuel emergency by broadcasting made a made a fuel when the calculated usable fuel predicted to be available upon landing at the nearest aerodrome where a safe landing can be made is less than the planned final reserve fuel it is also recommended while declaring minimum fuel pilot should report endurance in minutes this is primarily to enable atc to conduct efficient sequencing when airbus one requested delhi atc to keep them close to the runway since they were quite critical on fuel atc should have explored the possibility to accommodate the request of airbus one the situational awareness of the atc controllers appear to be lacking since the controller overlooked the made a fuel state of airbus one although the controller cleared airbus two to land and sequenced airbus one as number two to land behind airbus two yet after airbus two had landed airbus one was asked to go around since there were cfts on the runway which were dispatched to respond to any eventuality during the landing of airbus 2 which had declared made a few having sequenced airbus 1 which was very critical on few as number two for landing and then asking the aircraft to go around due to the cfts on the runway is shocking to say the least airbus 2 had declared made a few and had no other emergency on board so why these cfts were sent on the runway especially when airbus 1 with a critical fuel state was on the final approach maybe the controller was following sop for activating the emergency services in the event of an aircraft landing with a made a fuel emergency if so the sop should be reviewed since sending safety on runway after an aircraft with made a fuel has landed serve no purpose
the controller should have displayed the presence of mine and could have kept the CFTs on the high standby alert rather than sending them on the runway, particularly when an aircraft whose critical fuel state was on final approach. <clears throat> the controller further did not display any urgency to get the CFT quickly out of the runway and advise the pilot that he'll have to wait for another seven to eight minutes for landing, in spite of the fact that the aircraft was very critical on fuel. The controller appeared to be overwhelmed and mixed up due to the bad weather, missed approach and diversion by the number of aircraft, and made a fuel by two aircraft, as is evident from ATC recording transcripts. <clears throat> Now we will share with you actual ATC recordings which show a lack of situational awareness and confused state of mind of the controller. Airbus 1 transmitted to Delhi, can you take us closer to the approach path of runway 10? Delhi ATC responded to Airbus 1 not possible every aircraft not possible airbus one to delhi atc sir we don't have fuel we declare mayday delhi atc to airbus one two aircraft already diverted who had declared mayday The role of what supervisor, supervisory officer also raises some question. In such precarious conditions, where was the WSO and what was his level of involvement and supervision? Two aircraft on Mayday fuel should have alerted the WSO and he should have come to help the controller to manage the situation. It is not known whether the WSO was informed or was aware of the Mayday fuel communication by two aircraft. No log of the action taken by the WSO related to the Mayday fuel call by two aircraft was found by the investigation officer. The SOPs for activating the emergency services and sending CFTs on the runway in the event of the aircraft landing after having transmitted the Mayday fuel call appear to be faulty. The occurrence of the declaration of Mayday fuel by two aircraft was definitely in the category of a serious incident since Airbus 1 and 2 came very close to crashing due to fuel starvation in the face of adverse weather condition. The occurrence took place in the month of July 21, and the investigation report was completed on April 22. Two aircraft of same company getting in such a precarious situation, and crew of both the aircraft displaying similar lack of situation awareness and knowledge of the company SOP is a matter of concern. Although the counseling of the pilot and the controller has been carried out as per the investigation report, but no mention has been made about the counseling of WSO for his lack of involvement and supervisory lapse. Now we shall discuss lessons learned. First of all, the pilots must be extra alert and vigilant, particularly during the pre-monsoon, monsoon and winter seasons, and should plan and prepare the flight, keep
keeping the weather conditions in mind. The pilot should not be complacent and must make maximum use of ATIS and other means of communication to remain in current touch with the weather developments, which may change rapidly during bad weather months. The situational awareness of the pilots and CRM between them is of paramount importance and should be emphasized and re-emphasized at regular intervals. Knowledge about the weather in general and current and forecast weather in particular, weather and route and a diversion, fuel available, fuel required for the destination, minimum diversion fuel and contingency plan are some of the important aspects of situational awareness. Pilots should be familiar with the company SOPs and should not hesitate to declare minimum fuel state, which is the standard terminology to which the controllers have been trained to respond. There have been instances where the aircraft declared low on fuel but was not given any priority or attention by ATC and eventually, eventually the aircraft crashed. You must remember that ATCOs have been trained to respond only to minimum fuel and made a fuel and not to low on fuel. ATC should try to be more understanding, proactive and involved and should pay attention to the call by the aircraft about the low fuel state rather than waiting for the pilot to use the correct terminology of minimum fuel and then responding. Although the reason for hinder not being available is not known, yet under such a critical emergency situation, Delhi ATC should have taken initiative to remain in touch with Hindon ATC to facilitate the landing of the aircraft at Hindon, weather permitting, of course. Controllers should think of alternates like Hindon Satsawa in adverse weather conditions, which were prevailing at Delhi on the day of this occurrence, and have good interaction and coordination with them so as to provide alternatives to pilots for landing at the airports if all other options have been closed. It is essential for the controllers to be more sensitive to the requests by the pilots and understand the stressful conditions of the pilots which were existing on the day of the occurrence. There is also a need to appreciate that under adverse weather situation, traffic congestion, pilots unable to land due to weather, missed approaches, diversion by number of aircraft, and made a fuel call by two aircraft, which are unable to land due to bad weather, the controller can get stressed and may make wrong decisions and commit errors. Under such conditions, the WSO should come to the help of the controller and provide him or her with the necessary guidance and assistance. The SOPs for activating the emergency services for an aircraft that has landed safely after having declared made a fuel should be reviewed. Lack of correct MET information can lead to serious compromise on safety and the MET officials should show more sense of involvement and responsibility toward accurate weather information. The MET department should have a system of reporting winds at 500 and 1000 feet on the final approach 
and keep a very close watch on the weather condition, particularly during adverse weather periods. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for sparing your precious time to watch this video presentation. As is well known that human error is responsible for almost 80% of all accidents. All the human beings, including pilots and air traffic controllers, are prone to making errors. It is almost impossible to make human beings error proof. However, through proper training, supervision, and monitoring, the number of errors and seriousness of errors can be reduced to a great extent. What is most important is that we must learn lessons from our mistakes. In the interest of safety, the situational awareness of the pilots and air traffic controllers need to improve. Accountable manager and senior supervisors through their dedicated involvement can be instrumental in creating safe flying environment in the country. Wishing you all a very happy and safe flying and many, many happy landings. Jai Hind.